Hey everybody, it's EJ from iDesign.com and today we are going to make googly eyes. Woo! Super fun, really easy, and uh, I'm gonna break down how you can make googly eyes that you can put on anything in Cinema 4D. I'm gonna put them on an orange at the very end of this tutorial, but uh, that's what we're gonna do today. So let's get started. I'm gonna open up a new composition. And first I'm going to start out by making a cube and this is going to be our like eye geometry, our googly eye geometry. And what I want to do is we're going to do a little bit of modeling. I'm going to put three segments in there. I'm going to get my display mode to garage shading lines so I can actually see them. And what I'm going to do is use a correction deformer. And you can find that in the deformers menu. What a correction deformer does is it acts like any other kind of deformer where you have to make it a child of your object. But what I love about the correction deformer is that it allows you to access lines, points, and polygons of parametric objects. You don't have to make anything editable if you want to actually edit all these things. So I'm going to do a loop selection and move this down. And you can see that that correction deformer, as I, as I have the correction deformer uh, selected, I can make all these edits here. So basically what I want to do is throw this in a subdivision surface so you can see how that kind of rounds it out. And you can see that I'm building that little eye, that glass eye geometry. I'm going to go back to my correction deformer and with the polygon mode selected, I'm just going to move this in, scale this down a little bit, and just do something a little bit like that. And I can go into my loop selection and move this back a little bit. So again, this is all with the correction deformer selected. If you try to select this with the cube selected, you're not going to get any of those points or edges, but this is all in the correction deformer. So as I move this stuff around here, and maybe move this a little bit forward. So that's looking like a good eye, like glass eye or plastic eye shape that we can start with. Now we need to start texturing so we can actually see inside of this thing. So what I'm going to do is double click in the material manager, make a new material. And we're just going to turn on the transparency here. And the refraction preset I'm going to use is plexiglass because uh, that will give us a nice plasticky kind of look. And I'm going to apply that to the cube. And you can see that we can see through that in the viewport. I'm just going to rename this glass. And I, uh, I need to turn off that color channel there. Don't need that. Uh, and in the reflectance, I'm going to turn off specular. And in the transparency, I'm going to crank up the reflection strength here to say 235 and you're going to see that we're not seeing anything right now because we need some images in our scene to actually have it reflect and refract so I'm just going to throw in an HDR studio here turn off the floor in the background and now you can see we have a reflective -y iris kind of thing and we're going to turn on interactive render region here so you can see what's going on and one thing you're going to notice, I'm going to need to jack up the subdivision here so we can smooth out that geometry and that's looking pretty good. Now in uh, the googly eye stuff, usually you have like a white background here uh, that shows up, that makes that black iris or pupil kind of show up against this object. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. And a really cool thing about the correction deformer is so you have access to all of your polygons and all that stuff, you can move stuff around. You can also, I'm going to make a selection here. So I got this back panel here selected. You can also make polygon selections. So I just set that selection. And what I'm going to do is, see so right now I've applied it to the correction deformer, but what I want to do is actually use it on the cube. So I'm going to just bring that selection on the cube. I'm going to make a new material and just apply that to the cube and then I'm going to use that polygon selection to limit where that white texture is and you can see that we just made a polygon selection on a parametric object using the correction deformer super super cool super useful super handy so you can see now that when we throw our iris in there 
uh, we're actually going to have some some white background there to actually make it show up. So let's go ahead and make our little iris. I'm just going to use a cylinder and the radius of 50 is fine. Let's give it a height of like 10 and then let's uh, make this go a positive Z here. And we can give this a little bit of rounding, so we'll go to our caps, go to fill it, just a tiny radius of say, one's good, and a segment of four, that should be good. And then what I'm gonna do is make a nice shiny black material. So this is the white backing. This is, this will be our black iris. I think that's what the part of the eye is, the iris. Uh, and then we'll just bring this down and we'll turn on uh, some Beckman reflection here uh, doo -doo -doo. and turn off specular in this get a little bit of Fresnel here and basically we just want something nice and shiny to apply to our little iris there so now when we go in our interactive render region we got something looking fairly good maybe give this a little bit more of a rounding there and then just so we can try to avoid any kind of chunkiness on our cylinder we're going to go and up those rotation segments there just try to smooth that out and in this glass material what i want to do is get rid of exit reflections because typically you don't need them and they kind of just add some more calculations that you really don't need so that's looking good uh, so let's get out of interactive region. Let's go into our normal grout shading here. And now we can start doing some dynamical things. So, uh, the first thing, let me just rename this stuff here. So glass, this is the glass here. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is make our dynamic simulation as fast as possible. Uh, the more geometry, the more segments that you're dealing with, the slower the dynamics calculation will go. So with this little iris here, you know, the rotation segments are fairly high and that's needed because we want this smoothed out. If we had it something like this, you know, that doesn't look very good. So uh, what we're going to do is basically use like a proxy object or uh, a lower poly object that'll actually have the dynamics applied to it and then the iris, uh, the higher poly object will just kind of follow that over uh, or follow with it and sometimes you can use a mesh deformer if you're actually doing some uh, you know soft uh, soft body dynamics stuff but for this instance we can basically just go ahead and we just made this uh, copy here I'm just gonna bring that out and I can bring this segments all the way down to say like 14 so it's round enough and we'll just bring down the radius to say 46 so just maybe something like that so you can see that there's our low poly bit right there and then what I'm gonna do so this will be low poly iris. So what I'm going to do is make this high poly iris the child of the low poly iris and then I'm going to apply I'm going to turn off the visibility there and turn on the visibility on the iris. I'm just going to apply a dynamics tag to the low poly iris just so again we're just going to make all of this a very speedy uh, simulation. So now we need uh, something for this uh, glass part to actually bump into. And one thing I forgot to do is for glass materials, uh, this is just like a single panel of glass. Usually glass has a thickness to it to even add to more of the refraction and stuff like that. So before I go even any further, I just want to throw in a cloth surface here. And we're not going to give it any subdivisions, but I do want to add a little bit of thickness. You can see the difference between thickness and no thickness. It makes a huge, huge difference in what's going on there. So I just wanted to add that really quick. Uh, so that's looking really good, looking a little bit more realistic. All right, so we have our dynamics tag on our iris. 
You know, if we hit play, you can see that we just got our objects just fell right down, uh, right through our objects. So what we need to do is add a collider tag to our little glass eye bit. Uh, so it's very important that we place it on the subdivision surface because we place the collision tag uh, Collider tag on the glass uh, Cube here. What it's going to do is just take into account this Shape this geometry for the dynamic simulation So to make sure that it also takes into account the rounding from the subdivision surface as well as the cost surface we need to apply it to that topmost subdivision surface uh, layer or objects. So we're going to go ahead, get simulation tag, collider body, and everything should be fine and dandy. Let's hit play. Pew! Uh, so that didn't work very well. So what's going on? Well, uh, with our default collider tag here, the shape is set to automatic. Now what automatic does is it tries to make the fastest, quickest simulation, and it's not the most accurate. So what we need to do is actually change the uh, collision shape to something a little bit more accurate and something that also takes into account the hollowness of an object. So right now with automatic, this takes, uh, it, it basically looks at this glass object as if it was a solid object. That's why when the iris is intersecting a solid object, that's why it kind of shoots out the way it did. So we're going to use uh, either the moving mesh or static mesh. Uh, I'm going to use the moving mesh just because I might be moving around the the eyeball in the future so I'm just going to choose this and that's going to take into account the hollowness of this object and if I hit play you can see that that is true we now have our little iris bouncing around and staying inside of the glass eye part so the first thing we need to do is prevent this iris from kind of flopping over and the way we can do that is going into our force tab and changing in, or bringing up the angular dampening to like 100. And what that's going to do is try to dampen all the rotational uh, movements of our dynamics. So now we actually have our iris that just tries to stay up straight. So that's very important. Uh, we can also select both of our dynamic tags and add a little bit more bounce to the object. So both the the glass and the iris and then we'll bring up friction a little bit just so it tries to stay into place. You can see there's a little bit of jiggery, uh, jittering going on. Uh, we can, we're going to try to get rid of that a little bit later but one thing I want to demonstrate is me moving this around and we'll just kind of see how this looks. I think the bounce looks great and but whoa, our eyeball just flew out because we're moving too fast. Uh, so what what's going on with that? Uh, so to prevent that from happening, to prevent your eyeball from falling out, we need to go into our dynamics uh, in the project settings, and I just hit uh, Command D on Mac, and we're going to go into dynamics, and in the expert tab here, we're going to be looking at the steps per frames and the solver iterations. What this is going to do is increase the... Uh, the render time, but it's also going to make a more accurate dynamic simulation. And when you have things that are moving very fast in your scene, like potentially our little eyeball, uh, we want to crank up these values so it takes into account all that fast movement and doesn't have our eyeball just shoot right out. So what we're going to do is just bring this up to say 20 and 20, because eyesight's 20, 20, right? And we'll move this around and we'll go nuts. And you can see that, hey, we, uh, we, it's staying inside. And I think I actually did an undo of my, uh, my angular dampening here. Yeah. One, one too many undos. Went undo happy. Uh, so now we, now we can do this all we want, and it stays inside our eyeball, stays in our socket, or our iris stays in our eyeball, and all is well with the world. I'm just going to zero out the position there. So, uh, I mean, that's basically it. So we have a good dynamic simulation. We, uh, we have some nice bounce. Let's actually bring this up to say 2000, crank up this value and let's just really see if this is looking the way we want. Like the bounce, the bounce is looking good, looking nice. Uh, we can see 
that you know we're not having an inter intersecting or anything like that so that's all looking fine and dandy so now what we can do is let's just zero that glass out and we're just gonna group this and this will be the eyes and I'm just gonna duplicate this whole thing move it over so now we got two eyeballs and we'll just center this up like so we'll give that value whoop there we go center that up so now we got two eyeballs and uh, basically what we want to do is then take out the irises and then we can group these eyes together so each eye so we got two eyes in here so this will be like our move uh, actually let's create a new null so it's actually centered up and we'll place these two eyes in this eye null it's nice and centered in our scene and hit play and we can just move that null around and you can see that hey we got some googly eyes we got some fun googly eyes going on and uh, you can put this on any object so for example I went and got a uh, an orange so I just move the orange around and you can see that it's going all crazy and my iris just, my eyeball just flew off uh, right there so uh, that's also due to, you know, I moved the orange again, so I need to put that back. Put that back and just move all this stuff around. We can rotate, go all googly. And again, if your eyeballs fall out, if your eyeballs fall out, <laughs> go into the dynamics and, you know, crank up these values here. And that will uh, kind of help that if, you're, if your object's really going really quickly. But this is pretty fun make some googly eyeballs quickly and easily in Cinema 4D. Um, hope you guys had uh, fun watching this. As much fun as I had making these guys. Uh, but if you have any questions, be sure to ask them in the comments section. Uh, if you make some googly eye goodness, I want to see it, so be sure to share it with me. And uh, yeah, that's going to be it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye, everybody.